I mean, I think Pete, Pete Brandt is obviously a great addition to the team. We're so excited to have him. I'm not quite sure if he can sell yet. He had a good quarter last quarter, but we need a track record. He certainly could be a good auctioneer. There's no doubt about that. That's the first time I've heard him, <laughs> heard him shouting like that. Anyway, a couple of things, a uh, couple of thank yous, first of all. Uh, thanks to everybody in the audience, uh, customers and partners in particular, of course. Um, thanks for your business. We really appreciate it. I'll probably say that at the very end as well. I'm only going to speak for about 10 to 15 minutes just to give a, a general overview, but I really appreciate it. And then thanks to everybody in, in the audience for investing your time and coming to the, the, the agility. Um, we really do appreciate it. I, I noticed I couldn't see uh, how many people were here uh, before. This wasn't the, the first that had been here before. Um, but if you have been here for a few years, you might realize I man managed to miss last year. Um, uh, the history with me is I retired on a sabbatical for about six months. I thought I was going to be on the golf course today. Um, I'd much rather be here, honest. <laughs> Yeah that, was, yeah, that was a joke, actually. <laughs> it was a joke. Um, but, but I'm actually, I, I'm really excited about uh, the, the, the position that F5 is in right now. I think we're in a really good position. Um, we, we, uh, you know, we've gone through really a transition year uh, uh, during this year, um, but we've, pro we've created more products for, for as business drivers in the last quarter and this current quarter and 2017, I think it's going to really propel the, the company. Um, I can see revenue growth uh, in fiscal 17, um, but more importantly, and I'll talk about this in my very last slide, I think we're in a really good strategic position. And I've said in, in, in Wall Street forums, I, a lot of our peers would give their right arm to be in the position we're in because there's so much technology disruption going on right now that if you're not part of that disruption, you're, you're, in, you're in trouble. And I'll talk about that, talk about that later. Um, the company, uh, last year we did 1.92 billion in, in revenue. Uh, very, very profitable. Uh, great market share, and obviously we're global. You know, we, we optimize the internet traffic, so we've, by definition we're going to be global. Um, so far, we're at 1.47 billion in revenue after quarter three. We've given guidance of 515 million to 525 million, um, and hopefully we'll meet that guidance or beat that guidance. That's certainly the goal. Um, so I think we're in really good shape as we move into next year. Uh, great balance sheet, over a billion dollars in cash, and, and balance sheet we've bought back. I think it's two point, don't hold me to this, I might be slightly wrong, but 2.7 billion in cash um, given back to, to uh, by buying back the stock and giving that back to the investors. So the company is in, is in pretty good shape. From a customer's perspective, uh, we've got a tremendous customer base. Thank you, customers. Uh, tremendous customer base. We have about 80 plus percent of the Fortune 500. Uh, similar statistics when we look globally as well. Not quite as much as higher percentage, but similar. But definitely, you know, who's who of banking, um, best global brands, telco, very, very strong, uh, automotive companies, uh, airlines. Uh, we have a really great customer base. Let's just ha have a look at what's happened in the internet over the last, actually, 25 years. It doesn't seem like that, but let let's just talk about it. 1990, there was no internet. Um, you did go to your bank. You did go to your store to get your, your, your provisions. Um, there was just no concept of ordering something online. First uh, website uh, was 1991. Uh, that was the very first one. In the mid-90s, we had uh, Amazon. Uh, in, in, in 1994, the company was founded. I remember I was doing, I, I was president of Sequent Computer Systems at the time based in Portland, Oregon. And we went to uh, one of the investor conferences in New York, and the guest speaker was a guy called Bezos. And uh, he was talking about you know, selling books over the internet. It was packed, actually. And it was when, we, you know, it was when the internet, you know, people were starting to realize you could make business on the internet. And I also remember that the thing that was, was uh, that he was asked a question about how much revenue are you doing? And he said, well, we don't talk about revenue. And I thought, wow, this guy's different. <laughs> He's really different. And obviously, he proved to be different. In uh, 1996, F5 was founded. 
First of all, we were founded to do virtual reality software. That was the idea. But we couldn't get servers. We, I was not there at the time. The, company couldn't get, the founders couldn't get servers fast enough. So they created this little thing called load balancing. And of course, that then took off. And, and uh, in fact, the virtual reality side of things uh, disappeared. And you know, we started off uh, load balancing in 1996. I joined F5 in 2000, July 2000. My timing was absolutely awful. Uh, it, was, uh, it was fundamentally, it was three months before the dot-com implosion. And because we were all dot-com, that was our focus, because that was the easiest uh, thing to sell, dot-com sp springing up everywhere, selling them load balancers. Um, that just, that business went away, if, if you remember. Uh, we, you know, we had one customer that was 25% of our business that went bankrupt. And uh, the timing wasn't great, but it was a great decision that, when I look back. Um, in 2007, uh, this was a key year. This was the, the internet, by the way, and, and the, in, the number of internet uh, users in 2000 was about 400 million with about 17 million websites. In two, 2007, the internet had gone to 1.3 billion users. and the iPhone was born. The iPhone came in 2007. Mobile applications were born, and mobile applications have been driving our business. Not the only thing that's driving our business, so is data center and, and, and legacy applications, but they've been driving our business ever since that time. A really, really key thing from a, our, our perspective in terms of, of a, a business driver. And along came security problems, along came hacking, all of that stuff. 2016, we're now talking about 3 billion users. We're talking about 1 billion websites, 7 billion smartphones, 4 million mobile apps. And by 2020, we're expecting a, a spend of roughly 20 trillion, sorry, 1 trillion, with 30 billion endpoints. I think there's going to be more than 30 billion endpoints because of the Internet of Things. Um, so I think, it's going to, I think that, that estimate is, is low. Um, and that is good news for, for F5. Very, very good news, especially the application uh, side of it. And especially, sorry about this, the fact that security is getting heavier and heavier to control because that's uh, the core drivers of our business. So if there's one thing when I'm asked, what's the differentiation between F5 and other companies? It's very, very simple. It's our focus on applications by a mile. That's our competitive advantage. Um, our, 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 our products are such that they're application fluent. I don't want to get too technical, but it's, it's a session-based full proxy architecture. And that allows us to see what really is happening at that application level. It allows us to optimize the application, secure the application, and keep it highly available. And I'll talk about that in a second. And the good news for us is that applications are everywhere now. They affect you know, two-year-olds, one-year-olds, right up to you know, old people like me. Um, they, they, they impact companies. Uh, just, it's just so critical. They're everywhere. Uh, that, you know, everything you do today, that today, you're using your app and your mobile phone, or you're using online uh, banking, or you're booking an airline. It, it's everywhere. And 200, uh, 201 average apps run by enterprises in America. And that's across the enterprise, 201. But if you look, if you go up a little bit in terms of customer size, more than 500 apps are actually used and managed by over 30% of, of, of the enterprise customers. We have customers that are running thousands of apps. Um, many customers are doing that as well. I mentioned this. Our, this, is our, this is our goal. Our goal is to secure these applications with the focus on applications, and that goes right through our whole product line. Yeah, make them run faster, you know, improve the performance of those applications, and then just as importantly, make sure that they keep running. Make sure that they're up and they're highly available all the time. Um, we have most of what we do now as a company is mission critical. Um, if, our, if our systems don't work properly, it can affect ATMs, it can slow down mobile traffic, uh, you name it, it's extremely, extremely mission, mission critical. And then finally, this is just the final slide, because you're going to hear a lot more detail about 
you know, the, the, the subject matter here. But our vision is application without, without constraints. That, that's our vision. We don't care where the application sits. We don't care if it's in a public cloud like Azure or Amazon. We don't care if it's in a private cloud within your data center or within a colo. We don't care if it's, it's on-premise. Um, we, uh, we don't care if it's sitting on your, your, your smartphone. Our goal is to you know, run those applications, secure them without any constraints whatsoever. These are the four, uh, five, I should say, uh, key focus areas of our business. This is how, when we look at our business, this is where we talk about what's our strategy going to be in these five main areas. Uh, we actually had a strategy meeting yesterday um, for two th really starting off uh, halfway through the 2017 strategy session, which went extremely well. Um, we really believe we're in great shape. If we look at each one, ADC, ADC and private cloud, we've always enjoyed what we call a strategic control point in the data center. And by strategic control point, we mean we're critical, we see all the traffic, we see the traffic at the application level. And if you think about it and think about what other products you have in the data center that does that, there's very few. So we're a really critical building block to running that data center. Major, major goal is to make sure that as you build private clouds and hybrid clouds, that we, can, we maintain that strategic control point. We feel very good that we'll be able to do that. Our orchestration and management uh, products are key to doing that type of thing. As, as we have these disruptive changes that are happening, we want to be leading them with, with, with our products so that we're not behind. Um, so that's, that's the key thing that we're, we're focused on doing there. We also have tactical stuff going on in that world. We're going to be doing a product refresh. We've added a whole bunch of products, um, and we feel very, very good about that. Public cloud is more difficult. However, we're in a really good position, and you'll hear more about what we're doing there. Um, but we're focused on making sure we have a strategic control point in the public cloud as well. Uh, we believe that the perimeter is effectively gone. That suits us because it's more important to protect your application, whether it's running in the public cloud or anywhere. Um, we've, you know, on the conference calls that I've been doing recently, I've been talking about customers, not naming the customers, but giving examples of customers that have been moving to, say, Amazon or Azure, you know, uh, Exchange, Office uh, 360. We've given examples like that, where our products are just as important in an, uh, that environment. The WAF. Our, our you know, web application firewall, critical for uh, protecting your application, especially when you're in a public cloud. Our APM, Access Policy Manager, critical for protecting who can ac access your data and your apps, especially in public type, type clouds. And we've seen many, many examples of that. We've had examples actually where the, the customers that are running completely on Amazon weren't a customer of ours actually buying our products to do that, that protection. And then on that subject, security, we think security is probably our biggest driver over time. It's very, very application focused. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but we have a great and, and, a, and a growing uh, portfolio of solutions in the security space. F5 as a service, Silverline, you, you'll hear more about that, where we're taking with our first solution from a SaaS perspective was our DDoS solution. Uh, then we added our, our WAF, our web application firewall. You'll see us adding more and more services that way so that if the customer, we, whatever way the customer wants to buy, and of course that's changing, we want to be able to do it. And that's our, our, our main focus. We want to make it easy to buy. We want to make sure that speed and agility are the number one thing you're looking at by, by using our products. And then finally, global services. That's our jewel in the crown. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, more than half our business. Uh, that's, some of that's for a bad reason. I, I, in other words, we should be doing more product revenue, and I know we're in a great position to do that. But it's a great, uh, it's very visible from a financial perspective. Wall Street love that. But it's focused on customer satisfaction. That's the main goal of, of global services is to do that. And hopefully uh, um, we're meeting you know, your expectations from a customer's perspective. So applications without constraint, very, very clear vision. And I'd just like to start the way I finished and thank everybody. Thanks for your business. Thanks for coming here. And uh, I hope I get to, don't think I'm going to meet everybody, given the, the size of the audience here, but uh, I hope to meet as many people as possible the next couple of days. Thanks a lot. <laughs>